Hello fellow YouTubers, welcome back once again for another video review. This is kind of a, a more in-depth review or a, uh, a continuation as such uh, to my app, last Apple TV review that I did. We kind of went through a pretty in-depth review of the Apple TV third generation. This is going to be a continuation of that video. Uh, so if you haven't watched that one yet, make sure you check that out. Uh, I'll have the link down below as well as maybe a link right here. I don't know. Anyway, with that said, uh, we're going to go ahead and get right into it. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to show you the new stuff that they've added, as well as kind of what Apple's been doing, I guess, in terms of new stuff that they've added and what they're obviously planning on adding in the future. Uh, we don't know, but <coughs> uh, we'll play it as is. So let's go ahead and get into it. So here we are in the main menu of the Apple TV. Uh, nothing's really changed actually on this top row except for the inclusion of iTunes Radio. Obviously, this just kind of displays the overview of the different apps that I have available for iTunes, from movies, music, or music, movies, TV shows, uh, iTunes Radio, as well as computers that are sharing iTunes information. So if you have an, uh, a computer running iTunes and, you're do and you are sharing, then this is obviously the place where you can actually see that shared content. Um, but that hasn't really changed, except for the inclusion of iTunes Radio. Um, as long as you go over to iTunes Radio, which obviously is new, you can actually see your stations. If you go into it like I just did there, you can see your stations as well as popular stations, and you can still add a station, edit stations, and see your history, things like that. Uh, nothing, <clears throat> I guess, too technically difficult. It's actually really great. It works really good. Uh, very similar to how Pandora works, obviously. Um, so at least they have a really a, a good solid music integration now into iTunes rather than just the radio app that they used to have. Uh, if we go down, the further you go down, the more obviously they've actually included. So right away, just like the last time I did the video, I believe they still had Hulu Plus then. Trailers, that's just Apple's trailers. Hulu Plus connects them to Hulu Plus. Netflix control, connects to Netflix. Things that I will say about and YouTube, obviously YouTube. Uh, things that I would say that have changed a little bit, or hasn't changed and I wish that it would, uh, would be Netflix uh, still doesn't have... On the Apple TV, that is, as of December 5th, 16th of this year, 2013, they still don't have the ability to actually change users within the uh, Apple TV app like they have on several other ones like the PS3 and other uh, Roku boxes and things like that, some Blu-ray players. That's something that I see happening maybe in the future, and hopefully it's on their cards because I think the Apple TV is a very, very popular smart TV box. But uh, you only have one user, so... For instance, if I go in there and actually see what's recently watched and things like that, there will be stuff that I watch, but there will be a lot of stuff my kids watch. So if you have children or you have other people in your family that are watching things through Netflix, through the Apple TV, it's going to all show up in your specific, or whoever's logged in for that matter. Uh, Hulu really hasn't changed. They have the same pretty much um, menu option there for how to do that. And then the settings, settings is, hasn't really changed either. Scroll down, uh, Vimeo. Uh, Vimeo really hasn't changed either, the integration of that one fantastic however uh, and you can actually alter these locations again just I'll show you real quick just by pointing and holding then you can actually move the icons around so I've actually moved some things up that I actually use more frequently and that is Yahoo screen Yahoo screen is actually one of the brand new ones that just came out uh, a week and a half maybe maybe about a week and a half maybe two weeks ago uh, Yahoo screen is basically integration of Yahoo uh, videos and you can actually see things from categories you can go to their different channels so popular videos, uh, you can go into the comedy videos. They have a lot of stuff that they actually pull from Saturday Night Live. Uh, a lot of good old sketch comedy, fantastic stuff. The Onion, uh, sketch comedy places. There's a whole bunch of integration of a lot of little small comedy videos. Um, it updates probably about as much as the YouTube popular stuff changes. So things kind of do come up regularly, just one or two videos at a time even. Uh, celebrity, you can see what's going on with your with celebrities, things like that. I don't really watch a whole lot in this category myself, but food, fantastic one. You can find out some really neat uh, uh, different recipes and really cool videos uh, for that. Gaming, uh, kind of see what's going on with the gaming. You can see with the PS4 and the Xbox One and all a great integration there. A uh, lot of little games. You can kind of see trailers of upcoming games and stuff that's about to be released. Great. Same with movie trailers, kind of like we have the Apple Trailers app. This has 
some that you don't get in the Apple trailers as well as some just duplicates of what you see in Apple trailers. So uh, really nice they actually have a second or a, a third after YouTube, I guess, location to get movie trailers. Sports, you can obviously then follow sporting things and they have little training videos for that. Um, you can also go into their channel searching uh, in which you can actually separate it out by what they're actually following to produce those categories. Uh, so you can go directly into SNL, directly into Comedy Central, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, but it's a really, really fun little place to go. Um, every time I boot up my Apple TV, which is every single day, because I use that for almost all of my media now, YouTube is my first place to go. Yahoo Screen tends to be my second place to go uh, for some really nice little content, you know. Uh, PBS. So integration of PBS came out at the same time that Yahoo Screen did. Uh, and the neat thing about the PBS app is you get full uh, episodes of, if you have favorite PBS shows, otherwise full episodes of PBS programming. Uh, I don't think they have everything from PBS on there, but they have a lot. Um, Nova is one that I've watched a lot in the past, and you can watch full episodes of Nova on here. Uh, if we actually go over to the programs section, this is where you can actually see the programs that you can actually watch full episodes of. And uh, so as it's accessing BBS, you can actually see featured I, Iowa Public Television. When you start up the, P, the uh, PBS app the first time, you actually have to have a computer handy because you have to actually log on to, via your computer. I believe they give you a code on here to enter in uh, onto PBS.com or PBS.org and you have to put in your zip code so you have to pick, up, pick your local operator. You do not have to use your local uh, operator. You don't have to choose the one that's in your area. You can choose whatever PBS branch you'd like. Uh, of course, if you choose one, I'm in Iowa. If I choose the Iowa Public Television one, well, then I'm going to get some Iowa Public Television programs. So that's one thing. So if you're in a specific area and you, and you want to watch something from maybe where you're from or whatever, you can choose that. Uh, you can also go into PBS and actually change it back or change it to a different one. Uh, so it actually works pretty good. Um, lots of originals, more programs, and then the, in the more program section, they'll actually list all the different programs. Um, and they have, obviously, as you can see, quite a few. Uh, if I go into, so Nova Science Now is one that I've watched a few times already. Uh, you'll actually see that these are full episodes, so you have 52 minutes, 52 minutes, 53 minutes. They are actually full episodes of programs, uh, and so you get a lot of really good content, obviously, from uh, PBS. So there's, there's a lot of good content there. Um, also, you can look at my videos. I'm sure my videos are something I haven't really done a whole lot, but you can see my viewing history. That's the stuff I've watched most re recently. Uh, but under uh, the featured, you can see the things that are actually featured today. So you can always do search. Uh, settings. I haven't really played around with that one specifically so much. Uh, there you go. You can actually donate directly from your Apple TV. You can also deactivate, uh, which then you would cause you to reactivate or you can change your local station right from the app as well so I haven't actually tried that but um, but that's the PBS app. Crackle, if you've used Crackle on any other sources uh, essentially it's the exact same thing so finally we have Crackle, finally we have access to well free movies I guess if you want to say with some commercials but allows you to watch some I mean actually some pretty good movies. Big Daddy, Cable Dad, Rudy, uh, you saw Hollow Man um, Various decent movies, pretty good movies, uh, and you get to watch them for free. So free is always good. Uh, so what, you have some commercials in there, things like that. But you can uh, look by movies, uh, you can look at shows, so if you have a specific TV show or things like that you're kind of looking for. Uh, you can also create watch lists, or I guess here's the recommended watch lists. Uh, Marvel's, Hero or Marvel's, there we go. Uh, and then you can also go into My Crackle. Uh, I have My Crackle. I haven't logged in or anything like that, so I don't have anything in here. But uh, Crackle, yeah. So you can watch some free stuff. Bloomberg. Actually, this is pretty cool because Bloomberg is one of the first actual pro uh, apps or whatever you want to call them in, in the Apple TV to give you live TV. I know, you know, there's certain live things from the Wall Street Journal Live, which is in my last video. But this one actually has live TV, and so you can actually. Right now, this is what's actually going because Bloomberg is something that's actually broadcasting at all times. Uh, but they'll give you an ad first and then they'll go right into actual live TV. Uh, this kind of gives you a rundown of what's coming up. So if you, you know, at 5 p.m. they have this, at 4 p.m. So you can, you know, log on when you want to watch 
But uh, that's Bloomberg. Pretty cool little app. Uh, you can also look at past programming, so they have access to their back catalog. You can actually uh, go into the main page where we actually came in. These are actually the most watched, recently added, things like that. The trending videos that are actually going to show up in any of these programs. Uh, let's see. Sky News. Sky News has been added. Sky News, uh, I believe it's based in the UK. Really good news app, actually. Uh, I've watched several things off this. I kind of keep an eye on here, kind of like I did in the Wall Street Journal. I actually like this one. I think I don't, I don't know if I like it more than the Wall Street Journal, but it is good to have it in cooperation with because there's a lot of good stuff that they have overseas that you get to see. So, uh, pretty good stuff there. Categories, they also have live TV as well in here. Um, but yeah, that's Sky News. Uh, Wall Street Journal Live, that's one actually that was in my past uh, iteration of my review, so that's that's been there for a while, I think actually since the Apple TV, at least since the Apple TV 2. Smithsonian Channel, uh, they've added a lot of good science-based content on the Smithsonian Channel app. Uh, so they don't have as much, I mean PBS has the Nova and they have, this one kind of has more than Nova specifically for science, or but uh, they have a lot of good things. Uh, if you actually want to see full episodes of various content, Smithsonian's uh, app is also an, a great place to go because you can actually get stuff up. Uh, there we go. I actually watched this on the biggest cruise ship. Amazing, amazing beast. Uh, but you can obviously go on, watch it. This one's only a two-minute video, things like that. They have a lot of clips. They have episodes. They have a lot of little things in there. Oh, jeez, I hit too many times. Uh, Vivo. Vivo is a uh, place where you can actually watch, like, music videos. So you can watch a ton of music videos from current trending uh, music or obviously past music. You can actually see what's the most popular, what's most watched today. Well, I guess Roar is still one of the most watched videos. Uh, but you can obviously see the latest trending view this week uh, and uh, premieres. So you can obviously see things that are new, performances, so live performances they have on here. and henceforth and so on but you actually it's a great little place that my my daughter loves to watch the latest music videos but um, but yeah weather channel we actually have weather uh, on here as well now so you can actually put in your location and get the actual weather watch the actual uh, forecast for your area uh, and also watch various shows based on weather obviously the weather channel isn't just about your local weather anymore and they haven't been for a long time they actually have programs that are Designed to show you various things that weather related, I guess, in a, in a, in a way. But uh, yeah, so you can actually put in different locations. Um, you can add various locations and you can obviously change real quick on the fly. You can search for different things while within the Weather Channel app. Another new one that came with the PBS and everything Korean TV. So you can actually watch Korean TV, which is interesting because it's all in Korean if you uh, are familiar with it. By all means, but this is you can actually watch live Korean TV. You can watch video on demand from your various favorite Korean TV stations. Um, they actually have various plans, I guess, to watch other content with them. Um, you know, there's a lot of free TV listings in here, and I watched a couple of them, or you know, a few minutes of them, just to kind of get a feel for it. This was actually first came out, uh, but not too bad. I mean, obviously, if you're Korean and you or you speak Korean. Pretty cool, actually. I think it's awesome. I think they, I hope they do it for other languages as well. Podcast has been there for a long time, so that's obviously a podcast generator. You can watch those iCloud photos. As soon as they basically included the uh, iCloud into it, they uh, they put iCloud photos rather than just photos on here. So now you can actually see your iCloud photos. MLBTV.com hasn't changed. However, they've added ABC now. So that rather than going just ABC through Hulu Plus, now you can watch the various... ABC programming directly from ABC's own app. In all reality, most likely, that way they get the ad content. They get it directly to ABC. It's a smart move, in my opinion. Uh, and then you wouldn't have to wait for them to actually put it onto Hulu Plus, although Hulu Plus gets it right away anyway, basically for the most part from ABC anyway. Uh, but maybe they'll be pulling out. I don't, I don't know specifically, but obviously all your favorite um, ABC programs, I guess are now available via Apple TV via a dedicated station or app or channel or however you want to call it. We'll go down another one. NBA hasn't changed. NHL hasn't changed. They still have the old radio station in here, so you can actually still go into the old radio's app and uh, 
pick a radio station from around the, the country. Um, Flickr, now they have uh, Flickr integration, so you can actually go right into Flickr and see your own Flickr stuff, which I, that's been around for a while anyway. But ESPN, ESPN is actually one. Uh, if you have cable, you can actually watch uh, more things, I think, through the ESPN app. Otherwise, you actually get to, do get to watch various clips and things like that. But the live TV stuff, for the most part, uh, is locked unless you have a cable subscription with the various partners. So if I go into a locked content, you got to log into one of your one of their uh, their chosen partners, I guess. Uh, so if you have I mean, satellite obviously isn't listed, so you have to have some cable provider that is listed. Even if I did have cable, it wouldn't be listed because mine's MediaCom. But neat little things you can see the trending things you can watch the various things from ESPN on here. You just can't see this live stuff. All right, so let's go down to Kellos. This is a place where you can actually watch concerts. It is subscription based, so you you can get a free week subscription um, for free but $4.99 a month you can watch various concerts and music documentaries and from what I understand it's great I haven't tried the free trial yet but uh, I have to have time to do that because obviously I'd want to spend some time to watch that stuff so Crunchyroll if you if you know what it is it's anime so if you want to watch various anime things through Crunchyroll you can do so sign up or log in obviously uh, you can create a, an account things like that I don't know what the fee is associated with because I haven't actually looked at it. I'm not a big anime fan myself. Not that there's anything wrong with it. So $7 a month for anime membership all access for $12 a month. And I guess you can get one week free for there. So maybe I'll try that just to try it out. But uh, that's Crunchyroll. HBO Go, if you have an HBO subscription, you can have access to HBO Go without a... You can just look at the menu. So you can obviously see at least what's trending and what's new on HBO, but you can't watch anything Unless you have HBO with a verified subscriber. Um, but yeah, that's HBO Go. It's, it's HBO Go. Same with these two Disney Channel apps. Well, they have, I'm sure, great content. And you get this every time. So if you have a cable subscription through the same partners that are going to be um, through ESPN, you can get, well, obviously Disney owns ESPN, so that's why all three of those are basically the same way. But Disney XD and Disney Channel. Major League Soccer hasn't changed. iMovie Theater is actually one that has changed. Disney is actually going to be coupled with the same thing where you have to log in. But iMovie Theater is actually uh, one of those new items where if you have a Mac and you have iMovie, you can actually share content directly from iMovie right into iMovie Theater so you can actually watch it right on your, your screen, your big screen right away without actually having to put it, you know, render it, put it into a... Uh, a format that's you know healthy for iTunes to read and then share it via iTunes and then go to your computers that are sharing the iTunes libraries. This is actually something that's directly out of my movie. So that's basically what's all new with the Apple TV. Um, they've done a fantastic job, I think, in updating it. In the past, Apple's kind of stuck with the updating. Every time they have an iOS update, they update iTunes and then they'll throw an update to the Apple TV. Sometimes you get something new, sometimes they just do a, a basically a quick change in fixing bugs, things like that. Lately, however, with the automatic updates that they've actually rendered, things actually just start popping up, new apps all the time. And you won't even know there's new apps unless you actually thumb down to the bottom and you're like, oh, look at that, they've added a couple of new apps down here. Or you actually read about it, which uh, usually I'm always checking down here to see if they actually have added any content, but I, I keep up on the news, so... Uh, I'll know right away when I have a new app, and I'm always happy to try it out. And, a lo you know, it's actually added a lot of good content with Yahoo Screen, Yahoo Screen, PBS, um, obviously Vimeo we've had, Bloomberg and Sky News to get your, your local news, along with the Wall Street Journal live. Um, fantastic. I mean, they keep adding, and they keep adding, and they keep adding. And, uh, I can't wait to see what's next. But for now... They're keeping me happy because they're giving us new stuff more often than they have in, have in the past. So uh, I can't wait to see what they do with the next generation of Apple TV. Uh, because one thing I have noticed with other smart TV boxes that I've used in another review I have coming up for another box, the Apple TV is still one of the most responsive and fast loading and easy to use. So uh, while they don't have an app store for it, at least not yet, 
I don't know if they they need it, and I don't know if if I mean if they did have it and they had a lot of content you could download on the fly, and users could actually create apps like they do for the iPhone and the iPad. I would love that, but so far they're they're keeping me happy. They're keep they're giving us fresh content. Most of the content's actually free, so that always makes me happy. Less subscription based stuff, a lot of good free good free content. So, but that's. The new generation of Apple TV as of mid-December 2013. Only time will tell what's new. And of course, when I get enough new stuff to bring another video to you, I will do just that. So that's the new, crazy, awesome, fun Apple TV software. Whether you want to call them apps, or whether you want to call them channels, or whether you want to, whatever you want to call them, they make more, I guess, a better experience on the Apple TV. They give you more content to watch so you get bored less often. It's a fantastic way to uh, to increase, I think, viewership. From working at Best Buy, where I work, we do, we do sell a lot of Apple TVs that I've seen. And uh, it's a very healthy product. It's not one that I'm specifically drawn to other than the fact that I have a lot of Apple products. So it works really good in cooperation with you, with it. If you're looking for a smart TV box, there's definitely some great options out there. There are still things lacking from the Apple TV box that I wish they... I can't wait if they can find a way to get it integrated, if they can actually work out the partnerships. Bring Amazon Instant Video to Apple TV. Amazon, if you're listening, why would you not do that? It would actually bring more viewers to your stuff. So I understand that there's politics and other things behind that, but... It would just make sense to me if you were a co content creator that you would actually bring that content to as many devices as you can. I know they re they took out the AirPlay from the Apple T from the uh, iPad and the iPhone app. I'm sure there's ways to getting around that, but am I ready to start doing it? No, if, as long as they bring an app to it that'll actually allow you to do it from the Apple TV, I will become a Prime subscriber. So, till then, hope you've enjoyed the little. I don't know if I'd call it a review, but at least an additional information to the Apple TV. I hope to see you again soon. Subscribe above. Comment below. Let me know if there's anything else you want me to do. So, thanks again for watching. Tech Gooch, saying out.